What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Where last time we grabbed our bauxite, mixed it with some water, which created a lumina solution. That then feeds into these refineries with the addition of petroleum cork, which is making 400 aluminium scrap per minute. And that's per each machine. But the petroleum cork needed heavy oil residue. That's why we built these refineries where they of course consume crude oil, but also send out a byproduct of resin, which needed to get turned into plastic because if we didn't, the resin would back up and then that will mean the heavy oil residue won't get produced either. So we can't make petroleum cork. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do today is I want to start sending this scrap to another machine to actually start producing an object. But we've gotta be careful as well because we are sending out a byproduct of water from here. So we need to make sure that both items that do come on the output get consumed. So what we're gonna do is for the scrap, we're actually gonna put that into a smelter to actually make alternate pure aluminium ingots. And that's gonna require 60 scrap to output 30 aluminium ingots. But then the water needs to go into another machine. And if we look where this ingot needs to go, that's gonna go into an assembler. And if we go to an assembler, go in here and then scroll down and see our clad aluminum sheets, that requires copper ingots and aluminium ingots. I'm getting tongue twisted here. So this is gonna produce the uh, ingots from the scrap. And then the water is actually gonna go into a refinery, which is gonna make the pure copper ingots. So what I wanna do is I wanna find the, the, the total number of water that all of these machines are outputting and make sure that the exact amount of refineries are going to consume that amount of water. So we are gonna need quite a bit, which means we also need quite a bit of copper ore. And that's where I've turned to the grasslands because one, it has our uh, highway running through it. And yeah, it's not known for the best purities of the uh, ores, but what we wanna do is the main target is to consume that water. And to be honest, the safest way to actually use or consume the water that's being as sent out as a byproduct is just using the wet concrete. Because one, we need concrete a lot anyway. And two, it takes up a lot of water. So there are multiple things you could do with that. I could even package it if I want to and send it back over here or even send it around that machine. But I thought what I'm gonna do uh, in instead, I'm, I'm gonna actually put it into some copper. So I built this little foundation here, got a radio tower down as well. So if we go over to our map, we can see we've got quite a few little copper ores around here. And yes, we are gonna use the one that you have not seen yet because it was meant to be a Christmas special, which was gonna be the Christmas train, <laughs> which right there, that's as close as you're going to see to the Christmas factory that I built, <laughs> which I've not released. I'm, or maybe I will do. Maybe I'll release it for Easter or maybe for Halloween. I don't know. I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this copper from here. I'm gonna grab them two copper over there because that's all leading up here. And I'm gonna grab this and take it up here and put a train stick. Uh oh, uh oh, new enough, new, new, nearly died. Not gonna lie to you. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna bring them coppers up here, but then I'm also gonna head into this direction and there should also be some coppers just over here. Down there, you can see the tippity top of the one of them right there. And we are gonna grab a, another from this general direction as well. So I'm gonna get that place down and get that ready to be sent over. And I think I might come up with the blueprint design for the supports, not for this, but the supports of the extended uh, bridges that I'm gonna put out here uh, in a second. So let me build a blueprint. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm just gonna do a super, super simple one. And yes, I'm not gonna to touch signs. I'm not gonna use any signs with this build because as we know, well, with what happened this one, it knew enough corrupted our saves or other people's saves and causing massive FPS. So if you are watching this, please don't use signs as decorational pieces. But what I do want you to do is I want you to go into the description for today's sponsor. Raid Shadow... It's what? It's not that. Oh. Oh, it's this. Oh. <laughs> that was so cheesy. <laughs> That was so cheesy. Ignore me and apologize. I'm a spoon, okay? But you can get yourself some uh, new merch that's coming out. Satisfactory Kickstarter version 2 has now started. Do you remember the whole time they released the whole doggos and the, the cups? Well, they're now releasing the hogs and they're also releasing something else, which is super special. And I'm super glad I've got it. So are you ready? Are you ready? He's a big boy. 
It's a ginormous bean. <laughs> He's huge. Look at him. He's absolutely massive. <laughs> He's huge. He wants to inspect your factory. Was that the sound he does? I can't remember if that's the sound he does. But yeah, on this new Kickstarter is obviously the bean, the hog, a new mechanical pen, and also the build gun as well, the build tool. So if you want some of that, go over there, back it. But also there will be a second link, which will be my referral link to the already open store. If you want to get yourself a doggo, a cup, key rings, all that kind of stuff. Um, the employee of the month mug that's available and if you want to go over there check that link in the description there's two links like i said and that will support me as a creator because there is 15 percent off on some items 25 percent off some items and also 20 percent off which is i think permanently on the replicas yeah the replicas but anyway i'll pass you back over to satisfactory bits right now and I will uh I will see you when I see you next. Okay. Shoe. God that was cheesy as well, isn't it? <laughs> that was cheesy as well. <laughs> After all of that nonsense, he didn't even tell you about the album he dropped. What an absolute spoon. Well, I guess it's best time for me to tell you because it's an auto save right now. But yeah, link in the description if you want to check out my music. It's DMCA free. You're more than welcome to it. You can just Spot it on in the background. I'm not going to talk much more about it, but if you want to go and listen to it, links at the top of the description. So what we want to do is we want to do something just super, super simple. And I'm thinking about just going with the new foundations that we received, which are these. And we've got these little corners. So I want to try and find the center, which is right here. And I'm thinking I've just... I'll put this to default first, like this and this. Bada bing, bada bosh. And then we're just going to do that. I think I might just do this. Super simple. Uh, any of you can do it, you know. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put this. Uh, let's put it four. Uh, let's put it six. Yeah, no, let's put it. Let's take two off that. Let's make it four high. And then I'm just going to, you know, do that. Do it on this side. Wait, why you go, go vertical? Why would you want to zoop these next to each other? I don't know. I don't know. I'm already losing my marbles today. I've had a crazy stream today, and then things are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, <laughs> continue with what we're doing. So, <laughs> let's... Um, yeah, I think I want to go with that. Hi, Moth. Hello. Hi, Train. Um, but let's go with this. It's just super, super simple. Simple corner little pieces. No fancy lights on it or anything. And I think I'm just going to put this down on the bridges like i said i'm gonna do like you can see that bridge over there's got like nothing on it it's got no supports i think we can just put them down on it but yeah let me get to that and i'll get back with you so there we go we can now see the pillars are now underneath the new bridge that i've added but also this miner right here is still in the same place which is still grabbing the ore which is being merged with the one you can just see through the legs right there but as we can see, I've added a bit of an extension here as well, which is going down into the crater in the grasslands, which is grabbing all of this copper ore right here. With the addition of grabbing all of this copper ore on this side of the highway, which feeds into the train station. So overall, we're collecting four 480 lines and one 270 line. And if you're wondering why I need 270, that is just the excess overflows of the ore that I'm already bringing over here. And then the train station line joins onto the highway here. So yeah, you've guessed it. It does go over to the mega base and we did add a new train station, which unloads the copper ore right here. Even though it's called Mexico City, it doesn't need to be called that. I will end up changing that. I just don't know what to yet. But it also means we have a little bit of a new problem because we've got so many trains backed up because we have a signal problem. So every single one of our trains are backed up on this line and just waiting for one of them to move. And they're even backing up way over there as well. Okay, so after about an hour, yes, an hour, I figured out what the whole problem was. I was rattling my brains. I was stressing out. So what I did was I just removed all the signs and only to find out that this one right here this, this is a path signal. That's why it looks a little different if you've never used it. There was actually a block signal inside of this path signal. Yes, it's not supposed to happen. I think it's a bug. But yeah, there was a path signal inside the block signal, which caused the problem. So uh, what I've basically done here 
is if we describe ourselves a path signal, we can see that, oh, this is a white block right here, right? So if there is a train coming down this line right here and enters this white block, and there's a train coming down this line, if this train that's coming this way is not going to turn that way, it will go straight on. And this signal right here will tell that train, A up, you can go through this white block right here because that train has no business turning right into that lane right there. If that makes sense. That's what path signals do and that's what they're, you know, that's what they're programmed to do. It's just so much easier. Um, but path signals do tend to uh, slow down trains a little bit before it reaches a signal. Just so the in-game mechanics and all that kind of stuff can... It's like a... Think of it as a, a, a roundabout or a giveaway signal, right? So this is basically a giveaway sign. Um, so, you you know, you, you look before you actually turn, like most kind of thing. I'm just rambling on you right now, aren't I? <laughs> you guys know what I mean, hopefully. 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 Okay, so back to the topic at hand. As you can tell, I have added the copper, like I did say, and this is all going to go down to a new floor down here. So what we need to do is we need to get this water from here, and I've already figured out how much it was, but I've totally forgot how much it was. <laughs> so I have wrote it down on my notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to visually show you. So we have nine machines right here. I'm not going to do that last one, that, that, that tenth one, because I'm going to show you why in a second. And that ninth, all these nine machines are sending out 140 water. So if we do a calculator, 140 times by 9 is 1,260. And then we have this one, which is an underclocked machine, just because the amount of uh, aluminum solution it's making, because it's a one-to-one -one production, right? And this is making 80. And obviously, if you do 1,260 plus 80 is 1,340. And in a uh, refinery... A alternate pure copper ingots require 10 water. So if you think about it, if you do 1,340, 1,340 divided by 10, that's not right, is it? Oh, because I didn't do a zero at the end. <laughs> I didn't do a zero at the end. There we go. So that's going to require 134. And yes, I only did the calculator thing just so people who visually can understand it. So that's 1,340 um, water divided by 10 is 1, 000, uh, 134 refineries so we need to put down 134 refineries to consume all of this water with well this byproduct water um which will then uh, be able to constantly spit out the aluminium scrap which will get sent to some smelters which i'm going to probably going to put in that general direction over there so as you know me being me i will be using an underflooring to connect all the cables connect all the pipes and bada bing bada bosh yes i've added them so what I've done is I've actually, instead of adding all the amount I needed, which was 134, I've added 67, and what I've done is I've just overclocked them all up by 200% to give me that additional machine in each one. So each refinery is technically, you know, producing as if it was two refineries. So as you can see, 200% clock speed is producing 75 copper ingots per minute, which is going to require 30 uh, copper ore and 20 water. And that's what it's like in all of these. As you can tell, the red lights are still connected because I've not done any power. But what I've done is, obviously, uh, I've got uh, 480 maximum lines right now. And I've gone down each line 75, 75, uh, so uh, 150. Add a two more, that's 300. Add another two more, that'd be 450. So these are going to be 450 filled lines on each of these ones right here. I didn't want to do any form of load balancing. Uh, because I just didn't want to. <laughs> so these are all 450 lines. Yep, and that's all duplicated on this side as well. So this is going to be doing exactly the same. It's just that the conveyor belts this side, uh, well, this time, are actually coming towards them, and they will be heading underneath here, and they will be going to their destination. But I've not done that yet, because I want to talk to you about the water, and how I'm going to balance it out a little bit. So as you know, each of these machines are sending out 140 water. And each of these machines are requiring 20 water. So if you do 140 divided by 2, that is 7. So for every one refinery and every pipe coming out of here, that's going to go into 7 machines. So what I need to do is we're going to start right from this end right here. And this is actually outputting 80. So divide that by 2, that's going to mean 4 machines. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is going to come underneath here, just like this. Oh god, I need to remove this, don't I? 
Ignore this. I will remove it. Okay. Okay, there you go. And Bob's your uncle. I've now removed the pipes that was not meant to be there because I was doing some science and experimenting with some stuff and trying to make a bit more of a complicated setup uh, just to test myself a little bit. So, um, as we can tell now, this is the water that's going to be coming out. And this is going to be the 80 water coming down here. So, I need to grab myself a pipe. And then I'm just going to go, boom, bring this down and try and get this lined up. But right now, if we go to horizontal and vertical... Uh, there was an issue. I don't know if it's been fixed, uh, but we'll find out. We can actually push that back a little further. So I, I'm going to grab one of these. I'm going to place that there. Remove that. Remove that pipe. And then bring that to there, just like this. And then what I want to do is I want to do exactly the same on this side. Oh, there we go. That was the bug. Did you see that? It's a weird bug right now. So every time you go for like, if you're using the horizontal and vertical build mode with the pipes, it's doing this weird thing. I don't know why. And it places it like that. It automatically goes on like a 45 degree angle instead of being stood up, which is super strange. So hopefully that gets fixed soon. But you can actually fix that by just using auto instead. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this up here. Hopefully that's fine there. It's not. So I'm going to push you back. I always over overcompensate, you know. I mean the pipes, and I don't mean my pipe, okay? <laughs> um, so I'm going to put that into there. And then what I want to do is I want to create a, a, a junction right here. So that's one, and I want to line this up here. Once you've got the first junction down, you can just line the other ones up. Super, super simple. Uh, two, uh, well, sorry, three and four. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this pipe round here. And this is just going to connect up to this, this junction right here. But I do need to reconnect this right here. So let's just bring that down to there. And then just bring all these pipes down like so. And then because we are bringing 80, we don't. We only need a Mark 1 pipe. So we don't need to go to a Mark 2. So we can just leave this as it is, like that. And then that uh, 80 water right now, we can kind of hear the machine roaring because it is starting to send the water down here. Uh, and because that is the same distance in drop than that, that water should technically reach them machines. Um, so eventually this will fill up, do its thing. Uh, and what we're going to end up doing, uh, just as a safety precaution, I always do it. I, I still end up putting a pump on all of my lines. Because, as you know, there's a lot of technical issues with liquids. We've gone over this multiple times. It's all over there. Even uh, satisfactory devs have mentioned it on the thing and all this kind of stuff. Um, so... I'm probably going to put a pump there, and on each of these lines, I'm going to do a pump. So next thing I need, need to do is I need to do this for the same one, right? So this is the next one right here, and this is going to be sending 140 water down. So if I just jump up here, grab this one, 140? Uh, 140? <laughs> 140. So that's going to go to seven machines this time, um, because I've overclocked them haven't I? So this is going to come down here. I'm going to do that for all of these and get it all done. And then I think I'm going to um, power it, and then I'm going to show you the results. So there we go. You can see I've now connected pipes up to all them down there and all these down here. And what I've done is I've just put a Mark II pump on each side just to give it a bit of uh, thrust. And what I've found out recently, you should you should not really. And this is where we did a multiple experiments and multiple uh, some other creators have done it and some viewers of my community have done it as well. Is we found out if you put a pump on the horizontal part of the pipe you don't actually have them random um, water uplift issues. Um, and what I mean by that is when you put a pump on this bit here, and then you'll find out sometimes if you're sending 600 water to uh, to uh, 600 water required machines, if that makes sense, the end ones don't normally get the water. But what I found out is if you actually put the pump on the horizontal bit, because what's happening is, is if I was to put a pump there, for example, the water, because this is not being pumped, right? This is actually catching. So this water's coming up here, but it's still coming up pretty slow until about here, until it reaches the pump, right? And then it's going to push on. It, it's super weird, I know. You just have to have to trust me on that. But, like, it works. It's weird. But if you put your pump uh, pumps on... Uh, I, I don't know why I'm saying pump, uh, like poops and stuff. Uh, this video... Really, <laughs> I don't know. I've got farts on my brain, apparently, today. Uh, but yeah, if you put your pumps horizontally, it kind of just makes it a lot easier and you'll find out there's a lot more um, consistency with your water going throughout your build. So, like I said, uh, I've done all the pipes and all that kind of stuff, but I've also brought down the um, the lines here with all the aluminium scrap or aluminium scrap, 
which is going to go to the smelters, which might, is my next uh, project. I've also added the power to uh, uh, just like the simple underflooring, which I've done for years now since the uh, walls and underflooring got connected. Uh, and, uh, well, got connected, got updated into the game. Uh, and all of this is now in here. So what I normally do now is I like to stress test. Uh, and what I mean by stress test, and if you think about stress testing a PC, you want to overclock your PC, you want to test some games, you want to benchmark your games, you've got a stress test, right? And my form of stress testing is in this game is getting all your lines that you have moving and filling. I don't know why this one's not filling yet, uh, which is why we need to stress test is we're going to fill all these lines and then I'm going to put down the corresponding sinks for each line. So we have uh, how many lines on this one? Six. And then we've got six on that side. So that means I need to put 12 sinks down. I'm going to connect each of these lines up to 12 different sinks and then run it. And then I want to make sure that everything, especially the copper, is running uh, smoothly and that all of these machines are not being backed up by water issues or uh, the incorrect amount of uh, copper. It also checks that our train is bringing in enough copper or, copper ore in as well. Uh, so it's a good way to actually stress test your build, especially if you're doing large builds. It's a good way because technically now I could send that to the smelters and I could bring in the scrap to mix with the um, the aluminium ingots later down the line. But then I find out there's an issue with this and I've misjudged the number or there's a number that's not right or anything like that. And to find out I've got to remove all of this to fix this issue. So it's a bit of a pain. So I highly recommend stress testing uh, different checkpoints throughout your build to make sure that you run efficiency and you don't have any of them problems. Okay, so I've been working on the next little bit of project, and as you know, we need to get this scrap moving and grooving out of these uh, refineries right here. Uh, because if we don't send the scrap elsewhere, the water is going to back up, which means these will not get fed water. So that means we're not going to make any copper ingots. So in each of the machines, it's actually making 400 aluminium scrap. And we have nine producing 400, which if we do the maths again, 400 times nine is going to be 3,600. And then 3,600 plus eh, uh, 22857. So uh, plus 228.57 is going to be 3,828.57. And if I grab a myself a smelter right here, because that's where it's going to get sent to, to make aluminium pure uh, ingots. And that requires 60. And if we do the maths on that, if we go uh, 382857, uh, 3828.57 divide by 60. Oh, divide by 60 is going to be 63 machines. But we're actually going to put 64 down, and the 64th machine is going to be overclocked to 80%. So if we go around here and head around this corner and then head around this corner, you can see, see a meal I, I, I prepared earlier. And yes, this is all of the 64 machines. It's a simple manifold setup with an underfloor of the scrap coming up here, which is going to go along these into each of the machines, which have been uh, just set to standard uh, clocking recipes, which are outputting 30 ingots. And then here, it's doing the same. So this side and this side are merging together to make the... Um, how many is it per each one? I think the end ones are un underclocked, I believe. Hold, please. Uh, no, these are the, these are all 60 as well. Okay, yeah. So if we've got uh, 7, that means 14. 14 times by 30 is 420. So that's going to be 420 ingots going onto this line. And as you can tell, I've been uh, stress testing these machines right now. That's why the sinks are on the end. Like I said, stress testing is important. And I've just done that all the way along here. And then on the underground, you can see I've added some ceiling mounts, which I love since the recent update, which is bringing in all the aluminium scrap. So the reason the scrap's not coming along here right now is because the ingots have nowhere to go. And that's where the next step is going to come into place because we need to send these ingots and copper into an assembler to actually make the final product of today's episode, which is going to be... Oh the aluminium sheets and alclad casings so for aluminium sheets we're going to need 30 uh, aluminium ingots per line uh, and then 10 uh, copper ingots so if we think about it right 30 ingots that requires and these are outputting 30 ingots per each one we can kind of understand what we kind of need to do here which is going to end a output 30 
uh, our clad sheets permanent as well, which does mean we are massively overproducing on copper ingots, but that does not mean we can't use them for the future. So we will send the ingots to the, um, what they called, assemblers, uh, and the rest will go to the sink so we can keep the water constantly moving and being consumed by these. Otherwise, like I keep saying, they will back up into them refineries, which then won't produce the aluminium scrap. All right, so as you can see, I've been busy. I don't know why I'm out of breath. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm out of breath. But you can see that the smelters are now directly feeding with uh, ingots going straight into these assemblers, which the assemblers are obviously, like I said before, requiring 30 aluminium ingots and uh, 10 copper ingots per minute to produce 30 outclad sheets. And they're actually coming up here and then just going and... Wait. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> the outclad sheets are coming out this side, which are currently being stored into these. And once they've stored, I can then just get them into sinks. I've already stress tested them and that I, I left it for about two hours. Uh, so all the manifolds can kind of just get heated up and all this kind of stuff on stream whilst I was starting to prep for the next episode, which is episode 14, which I'll tease you about it. It's going to be radio control units. So we can start heading towards blenders, start heading towards drones and all that kind of good stuff. So we have the casings on this side and we can see we're making 480 on this line with a bit of load balancing over there. And then on here, we think I have about... What is it? I can put a sign there with exactly the right amount on it. 55.5 per minute on this line. And then we have a 480 line, which right now is just being sunk. Uh, and these ones are being stored here and being sunk. Just so we can kind of keep things moving. Because if anything on this whole line here backs up, for example, if this stops, that means the ingots will stop being produced, which means the copper, uh, the uh, scrap will stop being produced. And if the scrap stop being produced, it means the water stop going to get outputting, which means the copper won't get produced. And if the copper is not going to be produced, it won't come to the assemblers here with the ingots to make the casings again. It's one big round trip, one big round circle. So, and it's kind of very much like that when it gets to these stages in the game. You're going to start making sure that things are being used because of byproducts and all this kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys are finding it okay, especially if you're new to the game. If you're OGs to the game, you know what I mean. I don't need to explain any of this to you, but uh, but yeah. And then just for people who are curious, this is what my underflooring looks like. This is why I use underflooring, and I've always used it. Is It just makes things so much more cleaner. And you can see all the copper being sent up there into the sinks to keep the copper moving, because like I said, if it stops, everything else will start stopping. And then all the copper's coming down these lines, and yes, they are meant to have gaps in them because they are bringing in 450 per minute. But I'm leaving it running for now, just for, uh, just for stress testing purposes, to make sure that they are exactly sending 450 down each line. And on the top shelf here, you can see that you can see all the scrap coming down here at 400 per minute per each line going towards the smelters. But also, because the lines are backed up inside the machines back where the refineries are, all this right here is just excess scrap that's not being consumed. So these are just temporary lines, which goes along these uh, belts right here, up these lifts to all of these sinks right here, just so everything can keep moving. Because like I said, everything needs to keep moving for everything to work. So as we can see, this building is starting to get larger and larger, and that now is the aluminium floor done on that ground level. So we can cover it, start decorating around it, which we'll start doing in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just an emoji. And as always, keep smiling, and I'll see you in another video.